Now we'll talk about some very basic wave nomenclature, parts of the wave. And we'll start with the transverse wave up here. The top of the wave up here, the highest point in the wave, you know it's called the crest. And down here, down below this midline, this lowest part down here, that's referred to as the trough of the wave. Well, there's also some other things you have to understand about this transverse wave, and that is that the wave also has not just a, a crest and a trough, it also has what's referred to as a wavelength, and this is where some confusion often comes in. People often assume that the wavelength of a wave is measured from wave crest to wave crest. And people often say that the distance from wave crest to wave crest is the wavelength. And they're absolutely true. That is the wavelength. But you can also measure the wavelength between any two consecutive like points on the wave. It's not just the distance from wave crest to wave crest. It's the distance between any two consecutive like, like points. So I could measure the wavelength from this point where the wave crosses this midline to the same consecutive like point over here. That distance right there, that also is the wavelength. As a matter of fact, I could measure the wavelength from this point right here all the way over to the next consecutive like point over here. That is also the wavelength right there. So we have a wavelength here from crest to crest. We have a wavelength here from where the wave crosses the midpoint to over here, where it crosses the midpoint on the next consecutive like point, and between these two consecutive like points. So the wavelength is the distance between any two consecutive like points on the wave. Now we can also talk about something called the wave amplitude. And amplitude is a very important concept. Amplitude for a wave has to do with the energy that the wave is carrying. And for a transverse wave, the amplitude equates to the wave height or the distance above this midpoint line. So that wave height is also referred to as amplitude. and it equates to the energy that the wave is carrying. How? Like this. The higher the wave, the greater the energy the wave is carrying. And you understand that perhaps a little bit better if I say this to you. You see this midpoint line right here? If I were to take all the energy out of this transverse wave, there wouldn't be a wave there. We just have a flat line. If you don't shake the rope, the rope is straight. So if you take all the energy out of this transverse wave, you just have a wave that lies along this straight line. Well, actually, you have no wave, and so you have no energy. But as you start to vibrate this wave to produce wave, then as you add energy, the wave gets higher and higher and higher. So the height of the wave equates to the energy that the wave is carrying. That's important concept. All right, well, let's go down and talk about this longitudinal wave now. Well, for the longitudinal wave, we really don't have a wave crest and a wave trough. What we have for a longitudinal wave is we have alternating areas of compression that represents an area of compression and areas of rarefaction that lie between the areas of compression. The difference between the two, the compression is just that. It's areas where the molecules or atoms are squeezed closer together. They're compressed. And an area of rarefaction is where the molecules are spread further apart from each other. Rarefaction is a low pressure area, while a compression is a high pressure area. 
So you have low pressure separated by high pressure. And so the amplitude of a longitudinal wave, a compression wave, has to do with the degree of compression. How compressed are these molecules in these areas of compression? And that again relates to the energy that the wave is carrying. So if I were to take, for instance, one compression out of here, bring it over here so we can look at it and magnify it, I would see that this area of compression is an area where the molecules are squeezed together. And a low, a, a low compression or a compression that represents a low amplitude might be represented by this diagram. And this one over here is going to be a greater or higher compression, which would be a greater amplitude. The molecules are squeezed even closer together. There's more molecules per cubic centimeter, and the molecules are squeezed closer together. Now, generally, when you draw these, you draw one, a low amplitude, as being a light area, and a higher amplitude as darker. Well, I can actually draw the molecules in here, and this would be a low amplitude. This would be a high amplitude. This is low pr lower pressure than this one. So less compressed and more compressed, and that relates to the amplitude. Amplitude for a longitudinal or compression wave has to do with the degree of compression degree of compression. And if you look at this over here, we can measure the wavelength. For a longitudinal wave, the wavelength is simply the distance between the compressions. So here's what you understand. You understand in a transverse wave, you should be able to identify the crest and the trough of the wave. You should also be able to identify the amplitude of the wave and understand that the amplitude for a transverse wave represents wave height, which relates to the amount of energy that the wave is carrying. The higher the wave, the greater the energy. And I guess you know that if you're at the beach and you're standing out there in the water, if a little wave with low energy hits you, it doesn't do much. If a great big tall wave hits you, it has more energy and it's going to knock you over. Well. You also should remember that for a longitudinal or compression wave, that, the, that it consists of areas of compression and rarefaction. The rarefaction, you want to remember, is a low pressure area, a partial vacuum. A compression is a high pressure area. The degree of compression is the amplitude. Greater compression means more energy, higher amplitude. Less compression, lower energy, less amplitude. And remember that the wavelength is the distance between the waves, the wave compressions in this case.